Hi, I hope you're well. In today's video, I want to show you how spending just a couple of minutes on your images in Photoshop just to clean up the distracting elements in your photographs can make a huge difference to the overall look of your favorite photographs. So let's crack on. But just before we get into today's video, I want you to start by very quickly letting you know some really exciting news. You can now become a member of my channel by clicking on the join button just down there. And by becoming a member of my channel, not only will you be helping me to create new and better content for you in the future, but you'll also be able to access exclusive member only videos as well as regular member only live streams. I'm just really excited by all this and it will all be here on YouTube. YouTube. The first member only video is now live and that is a 30 minute video where I show you my preset in its entirety and exactly how I use my preset to edit my images. So if you do join my channel, a massive thank you. And I promise that in return, I'll do my very best to give you lots of really good, useful content. So in today's video, I wanted to show you how by just spending a couple of minutes in Photoshop, cleaning up the distracting elements in your images, it can make a huge difference, a massive difference to the overall look and impact of a photograph. I think it's only when you see the difference between the before and the after that you sometimes just realize just how big a difference it can actually make to clean up these distracting elements. I also find as well that even if at first you didn't realize what the distracting elements were when you see the before and after like here you then can't you can't go back and unsee them they just jump out at you as being really like ugly parts of the photograph that you just need to get rid of and the best thing is that getting rid of these distracting parts of the photograph is really easy it takes virtually no time photoshop makes clean up these areas just so simple as i'm going to show you in a minute literally two minutes in photoshop can take a photograph from being here to here so it's well worth doing and it's really easy to do so as you may already know I edit all my photographs in Adobe Lightroom but after I've exported the images from Lightroom I take my favorite images so not all of them just my favorites into Photoshop to do a little bit of extra work on them Lightroom is brilliant I absolutely love it I couldn't live without using Lightroom but its biggest weakness in my opinion is cloning the distracting parts of a photograph now in theory you can do it in Lightroom using the spot removal tool but in practice it, it, it just isn't very good but luckily Photoshop is now I usually deliver over 500 photographs for each of the weddings which I photograph I don't take every single image into Photoshop as I mentioned because it, otherwise it would just it would take me forever but I do like to take through probably around my favorite hundred or so shots for spending just a couple of minutes on those it does really transform them so it's well worth doing I find so I'm now going to open up Photoshop just to show you just how easy it is to do this and show you the tools within Photoshop that I use. So we'll start with this photograph. This is quite a good straightforward one to, to start with because you can see here that the clear distracting elements for me anyway are this area here and this light switch over here. And I want to start by showing you just how easy it is to do that to get rid of those areas using the lasso tool and content aware. So I use this tool here, which is the lasso tool, and I just go over to the areas of the photograph which I want to get rid of. So I'm just gonna go around here, including the shadow area. And then all I need to do then to use content aware is just press the delete key and then just press return. And Photoshop will do usually a very good job of getting rid of that distracting element. You can see that it's done an excellent job. That is what I say you can't really do anywhere near as well, unfortunately, in Lightroom. And we're just gonna go over here. Photoshop makes it really easy, especially if you've got an area like this where it's just an obvious easy thing to go around. Gets, it's a little bit more complicated sometimes, but I'm going to show you what I do with those in a second. So again, just draw around the light switch, press delete, press return, and it's gone. And by zooming out, we can then see the difference that the before and after makes. As I said earlier, I think it's sometimes really easy just to, to get a bit lazy and not do this. But when you do see the before and after, the difference really is worthwhile in my opinion. So that's how I use the lasso tool and content aware fill to get rid of the distracting elements, but sometimes it doesn't really work all that well. So in those situations, I'll use the clone stamp tool as I'm going to show you in this example here. 
So if I try to use the lasso tool and content aware here, let's just zoom in and give it a go first of all. Let's try here. For some reason, I'm not really sure why, sometimes in certain situations, and the more you use Photoshop, the more you'll get to learn what it will probably do before you actually try it. So you see here, it's just not really filled in that area with the raindrops, which is obviously going to look a bit strange. It's gonna look like there's a gap. So when that sort of thing happens, I go to the clone stamp tool over here. And what that does is by holding down the Alt key, it will allow me just to basically copy certain areas of the image, say here, and just go over and just replicate those and it works loads better. So in this example, which you can see we've got lots of distract elements here, we've got them down here, a little bit behind the groom there, a little bit behind the bride and these areas over here. So although there are quite a few different areas, it won't take long at all when we're using clone stamp as you'll see. So this is all seen in real time. All you've got to be aware of is, is that you're copying areas that are close to, that are physically located close to the areas that you're going over. So it looks realistic. Sometimes you'll have to move in a little bit closer. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller. So you see, it doesn't take long at all. But as I mentioned, I, I don't want to give the impression that I do this with every photograph because I, I really don't. But it really is worth it in my opinion. Especially if you're going to be showing any of these photographs on your in your portfolio or if you want to put them on Instagram. You really want to just spend that little bit of extra time just making them as good as they can be because it really does make a difference. So once we've done the intricate bits just near, near the couple, these bits over here are really easy. You can even make our brush go a little bit bigger just to get rid of these. So you'll see that I'm just constantly changing the area that I'm copying from just to make sure that it's always nearby because I want it to look as realistic as possible. So I don't tend to use a part of the photograph which is a long way away from the bit that I'm painting over. But that will probably be it, I would have thought. So again, it took no time at all. If I do a before and after, you see that it really does make a big difference. And here's another couple of examples. I'm going to speed these up a little bit because I'm using the same techniques as I've already just shown you. But again, by using a combination of content aware fill and the clone stamp tool, we can make massive difference to photographs. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, sometimes I think it's only when you see the before and the afters that you really realize just how big a difference clean up these distracting elements can make. I really can't stress enough that I do believe it's worth spending two minutes on your favorite photograph just to make them look at the absolute best that you can make them because it really does have a big effect. It's also interesting, I think, to discuss editing like this because I don't ever want to change reality, but I don't believe by doing this sort of editing that I actually am too much. I'm basically just keeping what is there but taking away the bits that just make the photograph just look a little bit ugly but I don't think I'm changing reality all that much by doing this I'm just sort of making the reality that that little bit more perfect but what I wouldn't want to do is change a photograph to the point where it just becomes completely unrealistic and fake to what the reality was I say I'm really just cleaning up the clutter more so than anything else I want the photograph to keep its integrity and to keep its realism so I just feel as though I'm just giving reality a little bit of a helping hand <laughs> So I hope you found this video useful. I'd love to know what you think, so please let me know in the comments. What I'm really intrigued about is, is whether you do think that this makes a big difference, whether you've already done this yourself in the past, and also whether you do think that this is maybe taking things a step too far and we're changing the reality too much. Say, everyone has their own opinions on what is right and what is wrong, but the way I see it, if we're editing images at all, if we're even taking images into Lightroom, we're changing the contrast and saturation, then we are changing reality anyway. So this is just a little tiny step beyond that. But I really do feel as though when it comes to providing the best work that we can for our bride and grooms, it's definitely a step that is worth taking. So thank you very much again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.